Well, the issue of assessment is 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 um, is a complicated one. It's complex. All those cliches. Um, but what what we what we certainly know now is that that every student, every individual, that you can't measure the value, the intelligence, um, the motivation of that student through a standardized test. So I mean, we, ought to, we ought to just admit that that's, that that's true. And people, people will give lip service to that in, in public school systems and individual schools. But at the end of the day, when you look at what they use as measurements, they fall back on what they know. And which is the, the, one of the bigger problems in education in general, is that everybody falls back on you know, what they know. But what they know doesn't really work in this, in this changing world that you mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, and um, <clears throat> so we need to come up with, with different ways of, of assessing students. And one way is what can they create? What can they make? Well, the only way you can find that out is by giving them time, a certain amount of time, and, a certain, uh, and an environment in which if they are creative, they, they could actually create. If you're sitting in a classroom from 8 or 8.30 until 3, and then you have afternoon requirements or whatever, and then you go home to five hours or four hours of homework every night, you have no opportunity to create. Um, one of my sort of uh, gurus when I was kind of growing up um, was I always liked to quote um, a, a philosopher named Krishnamurti to me. And Krishnamurti once said, without leisure, there can be no learning. Like, wow. I write poetry, um, occasionally a good one and usually a lot of throwaways and, and some mediocre ones, but I keep, I keep at it. And I can only write poetry when I have big chunks of time to take a walk or to daydream or whatever. And uh, our, the schools today, my God, the, you know, the word leisure, they don't know what that means. Um, I, I, when I first became a headmaster, I, I attended a workshop um, of, of other, of other ed school administrators conducted by a guy named Joseph Chilton Pierce who wrote Magical Child and he was kind of a, a, a leading educator then and some people still read him. And he asked us, a, they had done a study on the, kind of the best and the brightest kids who had gone on to Ivy schools and so on and they looked at their background and, and we were a bunch of principals and new heads of schools in the room and he said, what do you think these kids had in common? Oh, we all you know, we were so smart, we went around the circle, and, and Pierce said, no, 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 no. You know, he, he said, though the only thing we could find that these creative, best, brightest, wonderful student kids had in common was that in their childhood, they had spent long hours in open-eyed staring into space. They were daydreamers. But in their daydreams, um, kind of, you know, things bubbled up. And, I gave the example of my own poetry. When I, when I get some quiet time, occasionally something bubbles up that's worth getting down, and then I need the time to do it. I can't do it if the phone's ringing and if people are, you know, telling you got to go to this appointment or go there or whatever or get your homework in. Um, you can't be creative in conditions like that. So that's going to be a real challenge for schools of the future with all these things we want kids to learn to keep in mind that we need to give them just some time to be to be.